What's up guys, how are you doing? Today while we're here at the Grand Canyon, we're gonna take a few minutes out of our day to talk to you guys about Thousand Trails because I know that there are tons of misconceptions and previous plans and all sorts of craziness going on that it can be hard to figure out what's going on. So here is what is new with Thousand Trails at the end of 2017, rolling into 2018. And here's a little bit of our experience with Thousand Trails. So you can get a little inside scoop to give you a little bit of knowledge on what might be right for you. Hey guys, my name's James. And I'm Ashley. And we just sold our house and we are traveling across the country with our two kids. Hi, my name's Goose and this is Maverick in Apollo. Come join us. So I know a lot of you are watching this because you want to know, is Thousand Trails worth it? So short answer is yes, we highly recommend it. And if you want some more details as to why, keep watching because we'll let you know the pros and cons and what we think of it in detail. So in my mind it's worth it because we're doing this full time and the cost of going to a site, a site with full hookups, partial hookups, doesn't matter, it can be expensive very expensive and i mean we ran into a couple that was staying at the same site that we were and they paid what was it three hundred dollars yeah. it, it was at yosemite and a national park which they do have a campground mm -hmm. there just outside of it um and it's i believe 50 bucks a night maybe closer to 70 bucks a night i can't remember exactly 50 to 70 per night so in my mind which i'm a more analytical i gotta do the math and figure it out if you think about it this way the full price i believe is about 565 dollars so let's just say 550 for simplifying things. If you spend $50 a night at an RV park, which is pretty easy to do, that's only 11 nights. So if you plan on going someplace more than 11 nights throughout the entire year, it is worth it to you. So if you're a full timer, no brainer. We, we've only been full timing for about two months now and it is already paid for itself because I think we've stayed oh, over again. I think we've stayed at least 20 nights at a thousand trails park. So it, we've, I think we're down to what like $20 a night, which is amazing. So even if we stopped full timing right now after two months, it already paid for itself. And while it paid for itself for us, one thing that you do need to consider is that they have a very selected area right now mm. for where you can go camping. So if you live in the middle of the US, it might not be as worth it unless you're willing to travel because it definitely has a route along the border. It's kind of, of a U shape. Here's here, I'll show you guys a map right here of what Ashley's talking about. But for us, that's great because that's what we were doing. So while we're talking about locations, let's go ahead and go into a little bit more detail about that. The way the zone pass works for Thousand Trails is the country is broken up into five zones. So you have the Northeast, the Southeast, the Northwest, the Southwest, and the Midwest. So those are the five zones that is broken up across the country. So the way it works is you pay $565 for the first initial zone. And then every zone you wanna add after that is an extra $49, so basically 50 bucks. But there's always specials and things going on. So two months ago when we bought it, we actually got $100 off. So we only paid 465 for the first zone. And the really cool thing about it is you can add any other zone anytime you want. So what we did, since we're originally from Oregon is we bought the Northwest zone and then when we decided to go down to California a month later we called day of and added the California Nevada Arizona uh, zone for $50 and boom that night we could stay in a park now there is a catch though the zone that you just added to your previous zone it's going to expire at the same time that's, so that's even true. even if you buy it like two months later it's gonna expire the same time that you bought the very first. That, so that initial zone is when your 12 month period starts. Mm -hmm. And so say you bought that zone and then 11 months later, you added another zone, you only have that one for a month. So that's something to keep into consideration. But it is nice that you can add it anytime you want because it's if you're unsure like us where we're gonna be in a couple months, I don't wanna buy something on the East Coast and then never use it. So. I think that that's a pretty good uh, caveat to have to deal with because otherwise you would have to just upfront buy five zones and spend a couple hundred extra bucks when you might never use those. And it was actually really nice because we basically made our money back by staying in just that one zone. So if you're not planning to do really far traveling, it is perfect. You can just go from place to place to place. 
Now, in addition to those five zones across the country, there is actually something new called the Trails Collection, which is about an additional 200 parks spread out across the country. A lot of them are in like Florida or Arizona that make it much easier to find a park that you want. Now, just like the zones, this is something that you have to add, yeah. but because there's about 200 parks, it's not $49, it's $199. And again, just like the other zones, uh, it will expire the same time as your initial purchase of the first zone pass. But that's something really cool. Yeah, another thing that you really do need to keep in mind with the Trails Collection is that they do have age restrictions on some of the parks. So for people like us, we're not, we're not or, gonna get in. Or if <laughs> even if you are over 55, if you have children, you can't go, which is a bummer because some of those places have amazing pools and different amenities, but there are some age restrictions. So I would probably, I don't know exactly, but I would say at least a quarter of those 200 parks are 55 and older. And it of course is going to be in areas like Arizona and Florida just because those are the destination spots. That's where the baby boomers are going. So here's the other catch. You can only stay for four days at a time if you wanna go from one campground to the next. The, there are some myths and things that have changed with Thousand Trails over time. Uh, what Ashley's touching on is back in the day, they had multitude of plans and you would call and you would negotiate different plans. They've done away with all of that for the most part. You just have this zone pass thing, which has hard set rules. Which I love because in all reality, it's really simple. And for us, it's perfect because for the most part, we don't plan spending more than maybe three to four days at one place. So if you only spend four nights at a park, you could stay in Thousand Trails year round, spending four nights here, going to the next one, spending four nights there that same day. You could do that four, four, four. Or the other thing is if you wanted to spend up to two weeks at a park, you can. So you can spend 14 days at one park. That is the max duration. Whoop, phone fall. <laughs> two weeks. That is the max duration that you can spend at any individual park. And then when you do that, you have to be out of the Thousand Trail system for seven days. Mm -hmm. So even if you only spend five nights at a park, you still gotta be out for seven days. So uh, if that makes sense, you can spend extended periods of time, but then you gotta be out of the system. Or four nights, four nights, four nights, you could be there year round. Which was perfect for us because around Thanksgiving, we decided to go see one of our friends, get out of the cold weather. It worked out perfectly because since we stayed there for almost two weeks, we knew that we would be going to the Grand Canyon, which has no thousand trails. So we could be out for at least seven days. So you just, you just gotta plan a little bit ahead of time if you plan on standing, uh, staying at places extended periods of time. Let's talk about pros and cons, because mm. I think you've gotten most of the details as far as the technical stuff. But now that we've been doing this for a couple months, we're gonna let you know what we like and dislike about Thousand Trails. So I know that everybody is wanting to hear the cons first, but I think we're gonna start with the pros. Just because we wanna start it off with something a little something bit better. Something positive. Yes, and let's just end with, you know, the negative. No. Uh, we'll, we'll Oreo cookie this thing. So the pros. Pros are, for me, um, most of the, the places we've stayed at have felt family friendly. You, you feel like, yes, I can go out, go for a walk with my children, because as you have probably seen, or if you decide to follow us, you'll see we have two small children. We have two little girls, and they are the most important thing to us, and their safety means the most. So I don't wanna stay in a place where I don't feel like they're gonna be safe. But mm. some of the parks are in, I would say, sketchier parts of town. Like we were, like we said, we were at Las Vegas for two weeks. The surrounding area, was a little little bit sketchy for us yes. uh, coming from the suburbs. The, the, it was just the Vegas is a different vibe, but the parks itself are once, super nice. Once you got into the park, it didn't feel as bad. All of the thousand trails have you know codes that you have to put in to be able to get into the actual park. Um, so where the outside was a little iffy, I definitely didn't feel as bad on the in. But that's not to say that I didn't keep an eye on my children. <laughs> All right, next pro, obvious one we've already touched on, super affordable. We have not seen any better deals out there than the Thousand Trail system. There are a bunch of clubs and different things you can join, but as far as our research has shown, this is the best deal for people who camp a lot or who are full-timing at this, hands down. Another nice thing with the Thousand Trails is that they have a lot of varying amenities. Now, just like any other campsite, it will, like I said, vary. So some places have pools and other places have miniature golf. 
Uh, some places have, you know, a park for the kids. All of it just kind of varies depending on where you are. So take a look, make sure that you're knowledgeable on what is provided for you before you decide to book. Okay, last pro, you can book up to 60 days in advance. So that way you don't have to worry about not getting a spot. Cause you know, some of those busy times of the season, those popular parks will fill up quick. And you can book either on the web with your phone, or you can call in and talk to someone and have a person do it uh, for you, which is mm -hmm. if you're not quite as tech savvy, because I will be honest, their website's kind of, it's, it's gotten better since we started using it, but uh, if you don't wanna have to deal with the web or you don't have service uh, like uh, 4G or whatever, you can call them up and do it on the phone. And they're actually extremely courteous. I've talked to three or four different people there. Everyone has been super helpful. So that would be my last pro. Now let's talk about the cons. Oh, the cons. <laughs> I think the biggest con that comes to mind is the lack of parks. Compared to some of the other bigger chains out there, which are everywhere, there are far fewer thousand trails. You definitely have to do your research and figure out where you wanna go and figure out if it's worth the drive from that campground to whatever you're wanting to see. Luckily, most of the places we've been visiting, we've uh, had a place within a half an hour of the main spot that we're touring around. Okay, next con, uh, the parks vary massively from wide open spots, uh, like where were we at Leavenworth, yeah. where the spots were quite spacious, there was foresty trees all around. Or in Bend, Bend was gorgeous. Oh yeah, Even though Sun, it was Sun River Bend. Mm -hmm. Two, the parks like Las Vegas. When our slides was out, our neighbor slides was out, there was like two to three feet of space in between. So yeah. they vary massively. We were like parking sideways and trying to like find ways to get our truck in without being in the road. So again, do your research ahead of time to see if it's the kind of park you want to go to. But for us, we're all about frugal, cheap affordability. <laughs> so as much as it stank being at the- Stank. As much as it stank being at the uh, Las Vegas one where it was packed together, it was worth it to us because it was super affordable and we were gonna be there for two weeks. And I won't lie, the amenities at the Las Vegas one were quite nice. We went to the pool with our friends, the girls loved it. They had and a little dog park area. Yeah, and it didn't feel like gross or disgusting or anything like that. It felt very well kept. The problem is, is that you are close together. Now to Oreo Cookie, this like she said, even though there are many cons, you gotta think, why are you doing this? Are you doing this for what your campsite itself is gonna be like or for the experiences you're gonna have while you're there? Like we were at, when we were at Las Vegas, we took the day and we drove half an hour to Hoover Dam and explored Hoover Dam with the family. There are tons of parks all over the place. Like you are doing this because you want to travel and see the country, not necessarily because the park is the best thing in the world. Again, just do your research. All the information on all the parks are online, like I said, where you can browse through and book online. It tells you the details. They have photos and all the information about all the different parks online that you can look at. So do your research before you book and you should be good to go. One last thing, if you guys would like to check out Thousand Trails, we'll put the link in the description below. And if you have any questions, something that you feel like we didn't touch on, go ahead and leave a comment for us and we'll get back to you hopefully as soon as we can. Yeah, because I guarantee there are other little facts and things that we didn't mention, but this is the bulk of the information you need to know. But remember guys, until next time, stay positive, get out there, life is an adventure. So, so make, make some, some memories. memories.